Okay, so in part one, we put it together, and let's face it, it is what it is. It's a really good kit for the kids, things like that. But us as model makers, we could do so much more with this one. To be honest, as I said before, it's actually very good. Very limited little areas need attention, but the ones they do is definitely down here on the underside. So as you see, we've got these huge landing feet. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of those. So we need to fill those. We're gonna fill up the battery compartment, to be honest, the sound thing, because it's horrible. And then obviously the one on the front here, as well as down there. On the top, as we spoke about, about before to be honest again it's not too bad we pretty much get away with everything sort of up here on the front we've got little gaps as you can see just up side this one here and this one over here but generally the rest of them aren't too bad got some other ones just these little guys down in here here and then to be honest as we spoke about before up on the bridge there's a lots of little bits and pieces we can do with that one now, because this is covered in surface detail, we don't really want to have to go around and put all of that back in. So if we can do it without making too much sort of accidents and problems, then we'll be a lot easier a little bit later on, all right? So from our point of view, what we're going to do first of all is mask up a couple of areas. So we've just got some uh, Tamiya tape here. Now the point of this is, is so we can be quite sloppy with how we put this down. So we're going to mask up just down the end here. And then in here. Now we're not going right up to the edge because we want a smaller little bit of gap in here. Okay. But generally we do want to get rid of some of it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna put this around here. Okay, now this here is to be honest, um, something where it's gonna wobble around and everything else. So what we're gonna do is actually uh, glue that up. So, uh, okay, we've got some super glue. Okay, so what we're gonna do, is just gonna put a smidge in, just down around here, and then we're gonna pop this in. Hold it in place, to be honest, we've got some kicker, just to speed this up. Just around in there like that. Okay, so we're just gonna hold it, and then what we're going to do, we're just going to come in with a bit of super glue. We're not going to flood it, but we're just going to pop around some of the areas and then hope that it, the kicker will grab it like that. And it will start to set it as it goes round. Okay. Okay, that's got it, that's in there nicely. All right, so then with the super glue, we're just gonna come in and put a little bit of dab on here. And again, this is purely for speed. We just need it to bite a little bit, just over there. And then what we're gonna do is hang it upside down. So that way the kicker starts to activate with it and it'll pull like this instead of dropping in. Okay, so that's Pretty straightforward, so just another squirt up on the underside, just to get that going. And the thing with super glue, what's gonna happen is, it's gonna be like a lower level, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some perfect plastic putty type thing, which is a water-based filler, because that's easy to clean up and everything else. This is just to get it to lock in and take care of it like that. Okay, so that's all doing its bit, happy with that. All right, same with these guys down in here, so we're just gonna pop a little drip just down in there. This is just to hold these shut as well, just a little bit down there. Okay, and whilst that's going off, we're just gonna mask this all up.
The particular putty we're going to be using is this stuff. Okay, so it's Deluxe Materials Perfect Plastic Putty. Now, the thing with this, as I said before, it's water-based, which means it's really easy to clean up. So when you're on a surface area where it's very textured, it's going to be problems to get it out, you don't perhaps want a filler that's just going to go solid. You want something where you can literally wipe it away afterwards and you'd be good to go. And because of where this is and what we're going to do to it, sinkage isn't much of a problem or shrinkage isn't too much. So if this does sink a little bit in there, I don't think anyone's going to notice it. So to be honest, we are going to need, I've got a bit lying here, just a little bit of plastic car. Let's grab a little bit of plastic card and this will be our spatula for putting this down okay so you could literally use anything but I do tend to find a little bit of plastic card works a treat so this stuff you literally unscrew it and it is literally as simple as this so you have it on a little spatula all right and then what we're going to do is just going to come in and actually just before we do that we forgot to mask the centers off of this off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just going to tidy this up. Okay, so it's going to pop this little guy in here. I'm just going to mask the insides because as I say there's no point making damage where we don't need it okay so we can do something like this so we don't have to be too precise okay so there we go that's on there literally just like that. And then all we do, we just come in with this and we're just going to do this. Okay, it's as simple as that. So, <clears throat> it's one of those things, it doesn't have to be nice, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be practical. Okay, so again, so just the case of laying this down and coming in from the angles. Okay, so this is coming from the inside to the out. All right, let me just grab a little bit more. Okay, and then we're just gonna smear this very lightly right the way over. And then the idea is you put a little bit too much more than you need, and then that way with any shrinkage, it's gonna shrink back. Okay, so that's on. Now, this one here, it's got EU lines, battery things and stuff like that. So we're probably going to sand all of that out and everything else. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go in here into the battery well. And we just need to poke the air out of it before we come in. Like that. Okay, and then in here. Again, as we're saying, from the inside out. And then plenty of it, and that's why we're using this technique rather than others, because this we can go into our heart's content and fill up. <laughs> down here we can actually just wet this and we can wash this out of the panel line detail and literally just rinse it all out but we're going to leave it everywhere else and this won't affect anything okay now it's going to need a little bit of cleaning up as you can see okay but we can just lightly smooth this into all those areas where we want it and we just clean out with a paper towel okay same as in here wash this all out before it goes off as you can 
and see, and it will save a lot of time. And then obviously we can just add onto this as well. Okay, so I'm just working out where everything is in here. So some of this is going to need a little bit more clean out than others. Okay, but as long as the gaps are filled, we should be fine. Now this one here is going to be a little bit of a problem. Okay, so I've just done that one. Let's grab another cotton bud. Well, we might have to do this guy down here, drop a super glue in there, kick up, kill it. Okay, and away we go. And that is it, it is that simple. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna let that dry for around about an hour or two. Then we can unmask it, have a look, make sure we're happy with it. And then obviously when this is dry, I'm probably gonna give it 24 hours to totally dry. We can come in and actually sand it flat, rescribe it, put the details back into it, all the bits and pieces like that. I think quick coat of primer over it, see what we've got. If it's needed, a second coat, a third coat, whatever it is, right the way through. And then what I'm going to do is repeat everywhere else as well. So these little ones at the top, around here, and everything else like that. Some of them I might use actually uh, filler, we've done here. Others I might just use a tiny little bit of styrene filler, because around here at the top I think styrene filler would be a lot easier. But because we can't put this down for a minute until this is dried and it's secured and everything else like that, what we're going to do is let that dry and then we'll move on to the other side. Okay, so now we can get on uh, with the actual filler job on the top half and everything else. So for that, to be honest, we're using our friend uh, Liquid Styrene. Now, don't think this is gloop. This is something a little bit more technical to this one because it actually uses proper styrene sheet rather than sprue. Sprue tends to be very soft. It takes a long time to dry and everything else like this. By using styrene sheet, it will help you a lot. Have a look on the Flory Model site. We've got how to make this stuff in various batches and everything else. So I'll be honest, we've already been around uh, quite a few little areas on this and you might be able to see on this side how we've taken care of obviously the joins down here has gone now and around the top and everywhere else like that, okay? No problem at all. And that is because we are using literally this stuff, all right? So let me show you what we do on the other side because we've still got a few gaps to do. So we've actually got it just down in here, all right? So all we're gonna do, we take our little bit of gloopy stuff, all right? We come along and we just dab it down and bung up the hole for want of a better word, okay? So don't be afraid to use quite a bit because you wanna make sure it goes in there properly. Then once you've got it in, we actually brush it around elsewhere. And what happens is this stuff will self-level, okay? And it will go to give you a very glossy type finish, but it fills in that hole perfectly, okay? Literally just like that. And the same, because it self levels, it means we don't have to come in and take care of it anymore. If you do, you just go over it with a normal extra thin, brush it over the top, it melts it down, thins it out, and it flows off and goes into all the recesses, in this case, all the panel line stuff. So, he says, putting his finger right in it of all places. Okay, so this guy up here is quite a nasty one, as you can see in here. So what we're gonna do, exactly the same, we come up with a generous amount, we're trying to be quite accurate to sort of flood this in the gap, but as you can see, you're sort of dragging it down and pulling it over but you don't want to drag it so much that it actually just has a, a drag line between it. Okay, and that is it. It is simple as that. It's no real problem to this at all. And then obviously we've got the ones just running down the side here from these joints. So you can use just a tiny finer amount and we can just go in. And we can just brush those in. To be honest, these guys at the top aren't exactly nice. So again, we're going to come in, fill them. And then we can just go right over it like that. And we can sand and blend them in. But it's the one thing with this kit, it is a little bit gappy. So by doing this, it takes care of these gaps and then just enables us to take care of them afterwards. Okay, and that is literally it. Now, because we've shown down here, and I've put a fingerprint in it as well, take some normal extra thin, so just your normal stuff like this, okay, and then 
just brush it over the top, not over the area where you've joined it, just the areas where perhaps you've got a little bit of build up. Keep it nice and wet, just brush over it and that's thinned it. Now that'll dry back and we will never know it was there. It was literally gone. Okay, and that's what we did. Because you might remember we had the gaps at the front here. So we're taking care of those and all the things. So that is basically it. Very, very simple. Now, underside was a slightly different story. So what we did, we unmasked and we actually sanded in. And to be honest, the front, just make these before we give them a knock out of the way, the front end is no problem at all. As you can see, this is done. To be honest, I've just come in with a little bit of surface primer just over the top to act like a gap filler so we can have a look to see what's going on. So we're just gonna take a sponge and we're just going to rub this over just to see what we've got and how well it blends. And what we're looking for, to be honest, is the white to sort of come through so we can see. So it's just like we were saying with seam checking. Let's use some of a bit more bite. So we're just gonna go over it now and we can see the white coming through from the filler and we can see any little areas which perhaps going to need a little bit more attention a little bit more filler work generally you can see that one went in really really well i'm going to do a little bit of work down there but as you can see that is no problem at all so that's going to just need a little bit of clean round a little bit of rescribing work and we're good to go these ones at the back to be honest with you were not as nice um you know we had a few problems so actually what we did we used the actual styrene filler and we've gone along and flooded it in now the great thing is i don't know how well you'll see it the light catches on it you see we still have all the panel lines down in this these they haven't lost the actual panel lines so that means we can rescribe them once they're in so what we're going to do is we're going to gently sand that okay all in and then we're actually going to put the panel lines back in the chances are we won't actually see it and it's on the underside anyway but if you wanted to give that a couple of coats bring it up and you'll be good to go but you might notice elsewhere it's no problem at all so we just took care of those so what we're going to do is we're going to sand those out just like we've done the front see how they are if they're good then obviously we can just go straight in if they're not good then we might need another coat okay and do it properly what i wish i'd done now and hindsight's a wonderful thing if i was doing it again cut the door hinges completely off, fit them flush and pull them out so they're actually in there. The only thing is got nothing to get, um, sort of grip to, so what you have to do is put something in the back of it so it's got something to actually keep the distance, because don't forget, these would just push in if, we, if they didn't have the hinge part on it. So what you need is something to bring them out, so I'd probably pack them, the back of them, with something like plastic art, something else like that, so that they're the correct height. So that way you don't get this slight sinkage mark in there. But I'm thinking once these have been in, and we come in here with a medium skinny and we give these a sand over i'm hoping that really we're not going to really be able to see or notice any joints okay so that is the plan and what we're going to do to be honest this round here we're going to actually make into a panel line as well just to disguise hide it all completely away okay there we go as you can see it's going to go you're not going to be able to see it. i can guarantee it it's actually going better than i thought so what we're going to do is just literally lightly sand again always letting the sander do the work and we're going to do across here now to be honest across here we also had eu battery marks and disposal of battery and all of that stuff so we've sanded that away and also down here you might be able to just still see it you've actually got a thing saying luke um, lucas and disney and all that type of thing and copyright revel so you might just need to pop in here like we're doing here and just gonna sand them away okay that's them gone but yeah just all over this and we're just gonna gently come in sand this all away so it's all flush and is like one okay and that's all pretty good there all right so we get this sanded up checked out and everything else like that make sure this top's all good and we're happy with it all make sure we've got no more gaps everything else like that and then we can come in rescribe it and then i think we'd be ready for primer okay so we've been tidying up underneath here as we said it was a little bit of a mess so we filled and then we've gone in and to disguise it we've used a, an old trick which is basically use uh, shims, plastic card, various things like that to give more depth and detail. Now at the moment it doesn't look like much but hopefully you can't see it because we did fill and then we've rescribed over the top. But to be honest it wasn't perfect, we had a little couple of sink marks. So I've used a bit of plastic card on there 
and a couple of plus bits of plastic card. These square ones, to be honest, aren't too bad. Uh, they just sort of put those in afterwards, but the long strip ones have done. This here for the button, because technically we still need it for the lights, down the back, okay? So, you know, we've left that in. So we've made another one to sort of balance it up a bit. And we've done the same on here. Now, to be honest, this side wasn't too much of a problem. We've still got a little bit of scribe line off. But what we've done is go around and rescribe it. And the same as we did for these internal parts, everything else. We have got one in here, but that's a little bit soft in there. So I'm probably going to give that a rub afterwards and everything else. But generally, just going around tidying it all up. The other one was obviously the front. Actually, this one wasn't too bad at all. Uh, you can probably hardly see anything on this side at all. Uh, I literally just went around and redid it just to make sure we're all okay. Up on the top here, we took care obviously of those fronts and now hopefully you can see, this is how well that works. You can't even see where we did it. You see the shininess, that's it. And that's just by brushing around a little bit of the actual extra thin on top, gets rid of all those glue marks, okay, and you are good to go. So really, that is it, it is that simple. So it's one of those things, you can go as far or as little as you want, you can have more detail to it. Technically, some of these lumps and bumps, I think they're a little bit too soft and mouldily, you know, they're not brilliant, shall we say, things like that. So you might want to go in there with a little bit more of something heavy. But generally, for what we're doing here as a quick build, I think we're pretty much there. So very, very happy how this has turned out. So now what we can do is actually get this over to the spray booth. We're going to put literally just a light coat right the way over this one of some of what this darker grey colours we used underneath. I'm just going to break it up a little bit and then we're going to come back in and actually paint it. Now painting it what colour? Again, this is where, you know, it's the world of fantasy, um, but also it depends on your environment. Now for me, I've got huge studio lights, so to get the details to show through, I do have to sort of very subtly shift or colour shift things occasionally. Greys is definitely one of them. I did it to my Star Destroyer because in the flesh it looks slightly different to how you see it, okay? But that is the point to all of this. So what you might have to do from my point of view is lighten things a little bit more than you. That's why when you look at a lot of the prop ones they almost look white but actually on, on film they look grey. That's just because of the lighting techniques and everything else like that. So for me, XF19 is always my friend, okay? It's the colour I like to use for the sort of Imperial Star Destroyers and things like that. It's pretty close to what we want and then that way we can just slightly change it. And by slight changes, the ones I tend to use, put a tiny bit of buff with it, that gives you that sort of, you know, off grey colour and you can lighten it up a little bit as well, which is what I tend to do and then we'll go back. So ratios, if you're talking like it, I usually add 10% white to this and then probably just a few drops of buff just to make it sort of more of a cream off white colour uh, which has got like a hint of grey in there and all the rest of it but generally it works quite well. So what we're going to do, clear out the spray bay and we're going to move over there. Okay so to start off with we're just going to come in with any grey, it's the one we did underneath so I've got a little bit of XF82 lying around here. All right. Now, to be honest with this one as well, just because of it's the way I've used to doing all this stuff, I am going to be using pretty much Tamiya paints all the way through. I just find them easy to use. Okay, so we just give that a bit of a mix up. So, usual thing in here, we've got a standard old um, point two uh, needle set in this. To be honest, it's probably like a more point, uh, a point four these days because it's quite old. Okay, so we're just going to put a little bit of thinners in here. So I am using self-leveling thinners. That's just the blow through, happy of how that is. Okay, and then we're gonna add this on top. So this is gonna be literally just like a dust coat going on over the top of this. Now we say a dust coat is just to literally give everything else some grip and everything else like that. But we're gonna sort of pre-shade with this as well because this actually will be one of our dark colors we'll use for the top. All right, so we just move that out of the way. So usual thing, extractor on, safety first. Okay, so we'll start at the bottom so it can start to dry. So straight away we're going to do these areas down here um, that have had primer work and everything else just to see what we look like. Okay, so it's quite a, a dry mix this, it's not a wet mix. And as you can see elsewhere we're just going to come off and just going to put a dust coat off of those areas. Now these boxes I'm going to actually going to do heavier, okay? And this is going to be start somewhat the pre shading. But what we're trying to do is make sure that those blend in and you really can't see them. Everywhere else is just getting a little dusty coat. This is just so when we come in in a minute, it's all got something to grip to. 
So this area down in the middle of the dome, around here, we're going to give, we've already done the bay, but we're going to do the edge of the bay, a little bit of raised to there. Anywhere that's got sort of raised parts, I'm just going to put a little bit of this down the edges, because we can come in. Just to do those. Okay. So the trouble we're going to have with this one is holding it, all right? So we just need somewhere to hold. So we're just going to put a bit of this right over. Hopefully then it all disappears as it has, so that's handy. Just doing those, got a couple of bits there. This one right here. And again, just in the trench. It's all just to give a little bit of contrast and everything else like that. Now down the back here we're going to have to be a little bit careful because of the lighting system but for the moment we're just going to pop it down and again dusty coat just down on there like mats okay just working around these layers and then obviously this guy is going to be a bit heavier and a little bit like pre-shading, you just don't want to do that solid because we're going to do that afterwards. So we're just trying to add some shadowing around it. It's going to add natural shadowing around the outsides of it. Okay, so that's why we do it. This guy up here is a little bit of a plate. So we're just going to do that. And then obviously these guys will get heavier afterwards. Okay, around the edge again. Just the light dust coat. Okay, and that's all you're doing is just gently putting a dust coat right over the top. Okay, run. Just run on the other side. it and I'm hoping the bottom should be dry now to touch so we can just put a little bit around these edges and I'm just wondering just around the back areas just like that okay quite a bit of paint left over And as we always said, this is supposed to be a quick, fun build. If you want to do one of these professionally, have a look in the link below and you'll see my big star destroyer, which we'll have a look a bit afterwards and we can do a little bit of a side-by-side -side compare. So, next up is XF19. As I said, it's quite a nice colour, but it's just a little bit too grey. We want to make it a little bit lighter, so we're going to add some white to it. So, we're going to give this a good mix-up. I how much white we've actually got left in here. down in here I have got some white left over so I might be able to recover some of this I'm just going to use that brush we had before it's all greys at the end of the day okay then I'm going to take a little pot for colour so all I'm going to do is I'm going to tip all this in So I said before, it's like about 10% white goes in there, 90% really of this, and then 2%, which I know doesn't make sense, but you know what I'm saying, uh, a little couple of drops of buff. Okay, so. And as I say, being me, it's all done by eye. So we just pop this in, 
give this a good mix around. As I say, it's all sort of done by eye, so it is a light grey colour. And because of the scale, I don't think I'm going to put any buff into this. I don't know, I might just put a drop of buff or deck tan. Or if you've got wood. The reason for doing this, it gives it an off colour, which is a little bit of a homage back to the original. So again, just literally a couple of drops because they used to use Floquil White on a lot of their builds, which has this sort of creamy texture uh, and creamy look to it. And I just find it's one of those things on camera, it stops things looking white. And if you know me, you'll know I have this bit of a saying that says, never use black, never use white. And the reason I say that is, is because it's very rare you get black and white strong colours. Uh, normally they tend to be very sort of old, worn whites, worn blacks. So it tends to be different shades of, okay? So there we go, this is going to end. I'm not even going to clean this out. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put thinners in first. About a 50-50 mix. Now this one is going to be more grey because of the original grey that we've got in here. But that's not a problem because we're going to use this on the underside. Okay. Lid off. And this will hopefully sit in here somewhat like this. Okay, so we just check our flow. Okay, we'll start at the front. Very light. Hopefully you can see how it sort of mottles the colour and that's because it's obviously showing through underneath, okay? overhead camera decided to turn off on me anyway that has been down there now for I don't know not quite half an hour yet but to be honest we can push on nicely so again thinners in with paint now the only difference we've done between this one and the last one we did which obviously the big one is that the other one was black beforehand which is great so it's a bit like black basing and everything else like that which I find works great for sort of sci-fi stuff not so much a fan of it for day-to-day -day stuff but uh, for sci-fi things and things like that, I quite like the look of it. Gives everything a deeper shadow look, but this is a lot smaller. When you're doing something huge, I think it, that's when it comes into its own. When you're doing something like this, and let's face it, it's quite small, you want it to be lighter. You don't really want those dark areas. So anyway, here we go. This is the other half. So what we're going to do, hopefully, just check our flow. Happy with that again. So we're just gonna flip this over. And this at a time will work around the back. Okay, so again, we're just coming down. Towers, trying to come in from all the areas. But I wouldn't worry too much about the actual shadowing effect. So if you don't get everywhere, you're still gonna be coming in with washes, you're still gonna be coming in with different things to really liven this up so we're just making sure we've got it both sides down these backs okay and then we can just start working our way around okay so we're just making sure we get all these areas nicely covered And then you can blast away once you've got the, the large areas done. So again, don't forget the trenching. Uh, 
And again, you're not looking for it to be perfect paintwork. If anything, you want it to be a little bit rough. So I'm just doing a little bit heavier on these top surfaces just to give it a bit more wear and tear that is it. Okay, so actually, just a little bit more around this back. More around these tops. The great thing is, because the detail is quite heavy on this, you can blast away with paint and not really worry about it too much. So my main worry is the trench to make sure you've got good enough paint up in these areas. And there we go, we've just run out. So what we'll do is, really happy how that's come out, that's really looking the part. Still got a couple of layers of paint to go, so say we're going to pick out some of the darker areas, bits and pieces like that, some little details, and then what we're going to do is give this thing an entire wash as well to really make the details pop. But there we go, paintwork done.